Good morning, Peter. Thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Uh, can you tell us your role and industry? Well, I'm a uh, researcher in materials, science and engineering, and I work at a government laboratory, which is supported by the Department of Energy. And, and so you recently took a uh, survey that we conducted here with, at Authenticate. We asked you how big of a problem you perceive plagiarism to be in your field and industry, and you gave it a four for serious, four out of five. Why do you yeah. think you responded that way? Well, uh, from time to time, I volunteer to edit conferences and edit uh, or uh, review papers for various technical societies and technical journals. And more and more, I see an increase in papers from, particularly from non-English speaking countries, in which the reviewers, or I happen to catch it, uh, an instance where the author may actually be uh, self-plagiarizing. In my view, more important, uh, an aspect in plagiarizing other people's work and repackaging it. Do you feel that plagiarism in your field is increasing, decreasing, or staying the same? By the virtue of the increase in, in uh, submissions of papers and the need to uh, fill up one's resume for, under very competitive situations uh, for jobs and, and recognition, that there's a a stronger temptation these days to, uh, say, use the same bit of research and write several papers that are very, very similar based on the same data. So I see that as being a motivation for increased amounts of, of this uh, duplication or self-plagiarism. How often do you personally encounter plagiarism by others? I think you touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, you answered occasionally. Yes. The current conference, for example, I'm involved with has maybe uh, oh, two, uh, 250 or 300 papers. And out of that number of papers, uh, there are probably plagiarism or self-plagiarism aspects involved in 15 papers, 20 papers. So it's, it's a relatively small fraction of the papers, but when it does occur, it is, it is disturbing. Right. I'm seeing similar numbers in the industry. Um, so, you know, there's that controversy that it's not really a big issue, but then there's that flip side of, well, the papers that are an issue, it's a big problem. Right. Uh, so who is committing these acts of plagiarism? You answered the submitting authors. Yeah, or it might be a co-author. Hard to tell in some papers that have three, four, or five authors. If each one is, is submitting a portion of the paper, for example, it's not clear who it is who's maybe reusing material. Right, and I suppose if you're a co-author and they're using their own material, they're self-plagiarizing and you're not even aware of that. Right, that's possible. Uh, so what is the main reason you believe people choose not to check for plagiarism? And you answered confidence and originality of work. Yeah, I think there's, a, there, there's maybe a, a number of reasons uh, in addition to that. One of them uh, may be just naivete. Maybe they are not looking for it or don't expect to see it. Maybe they, they're, they're a new reviewer and they're not, it's not really up, upmost in their mind to, to worry about it. Sometimes they don't have access to the resources or programs or, uh, that, that can be used to check for it. Uh, sometimes they don't have the time to check for it. Perhaps it's a very well-known author or well-known researcher in the field and they, and, and they have a uh, a certain amount of esteem and would not expect them to, you know, to, to plagiarize them, their own work or, or the work of others. Right, right. The top answers were not having the time, not having the money, and not believing that was a problem, which goes hand in hand with the confidence and the originality of work. And there's another aspect to that. And uh, if, if, for example, in a, in a particular field of science, there's a standard procedure for conducting a certain test, and the authors may look at different materials or different situations but apply the same standard procedure, it might be just as easy to cut and paste that entire procedure into the paper uh, if the procedure hasn't changed from one, you know, one study to another. So that would pop up as being a finding self-plagiarism, but it's really, uh, I don't consider that to be a serious problem in plagiarism if it's if it's just repeating some standard test technique over and over again so that may be kind of a false case of uh, you know of, uh, where it's not as big a concern to me
as maybe uh, plagiarizing an interpretation or plagiarizing a, a discussion, something of that nature, where you're really looking for novelty, creativity, and new, new work. What do you think is the most effective deterrent to plagiarism? Uh, I think the knowledge that, that uh, you're going to be found out <laughs> if you do this. And as the increasing availability of resources uh, to find these things uh, is one aspect, but the authors have to realize that these resources are being applied to their work. That if you're, they're going to plagiarize themselves, there's a higher probability that they're, they're going to be found. Uh, I agree. We work closely with journals and publishers to make sure that they have their ethics policies very visible on those pages so that before they submit their work that they see that they check for plagiarism. Osref and COPE also really encourage journals to do that. I think it's a big deterrent. Well, where I was signed up was through the uh, editorial system of Elsevier. I've also been appointed uh, co-editor-in-chief for one of their journals, and I intend to use, continue to use the plagiarism software in that, in that capacity as well. What is your uh, opinion of self-plagiarism? Obviously, uh, you answered that it's a concern. I, I think it's a concern where it's being passed off as new work. Uh, like I say, if you, if you plagiarize a test procedure, now I've, I've had the opportunity to develop some uh, standard test procedures for the Amer uh, ASTM, you know, one of the standard societies. And in that case, the procedure is pretty much the same in order to conform to the standard. That's not particularly a concern. Right. And, and where I'd say is, is more of a concern is either p is passing off someone else's interpretation as your ideas or that, that sort of thing. That, right. That's clearly um, going you know, beyond, the, uh, beyond the boundaries of, of you know, reasonable uh, repetition. Right, right. Yeah, I've talked to many editors and, and they have the same point of view. A lot of people just aren't aware of self-plagiarism. They don't realize it's a problem. So a lot of editors just go back and they say, you've self-plagiarized or, you know, you're duplicating your work and you need to make sure that you cite this. So it's not like there's a high level of misconduct. It's on the lower edge. The last question here is how many times have you used Authenticate? may have used it um, a couple dozen times, perhaps. Uh, as I say, I don't do it on every paper, but I'm becoming a little bit more uh, cautious about that and, and, and probably using it more now. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it.